Hello, lovely people. I'm Sinead, and welcome back to Craft and Chat. Uh, this week, I managed to get all the key fobs done, uh, far more than I needed. Uh, once you've rolled out the slab and start cutting it into circles and whatnot, it's just really easy to do 200 when you set out to do 50. So, <laughs> so I've got a lot of key fobs, and they headed off to be fired today. Um, so I should have those back next week, probably and be able to finish doing my donation for the Pacific Northwest BJD Expo. Um, they turned out pretty good. Um, I, the only improvement I can see that, that could happen is going to require that I get a much more expensive stamp. Uh, the rubber stamp works. It leaves a little bit of a shadow, but anyway, I made um, a video um, which should come out later this week, showing the whole process of how I did those uh, key fobs. And um, let's see, what else did I do? I've worked on Granny's uh, Granny Elf uh, paper clay hands this week and tried a different method of um, recording that. And I'm not exactly happy with it, so well, I'm going to see how much of the footage that I can actually use. I'm, I'm trying to get closer in, but not too close, uh, because the closer in you get, the better detail you can capture, but the, um, I have trouble staying under that camera, so it's a common problem. Uh, the, the tendency is to want to pull your project closer to you and get that camera out from between you, which defeats the purpose. So anyway, that's that's been my challenge this week, is trying to learn a different way of recording what it is I'm doing. I also started on the cutest little project of, um, as I lean over here to get this, this little doll is to be a, um, a more accessible, I hope, way of creating a porcelain look doll f for your dolls um, or just for your miniature setting. I uh, haven't done his arms and their arms and legs yet because I don't know how I'm going to attach them. I mean, I've got two, two options circling in my head. I'm hoping to think of a third option because I'm not entirely thrilled with those two options, which is probably why they're chasing each other around in circles in my head. <laughs> Um, so that's going on. And as soon as I figure out the whole process, I will do it again and record the process so that I can share with you how I did that so that you can then make one if you'd like to, um, or at least kind of have an idea going into it, what, how you can do this with paper clay. Uh, then I also, uh, worked on finishing the uh, sheep's feet for the little sheep doll. They're all sanded and I did record the sanding, but I'm, I think I'm going to save it and include it in with the painting of the sheep. I have to find where I stashed the sheep and granny. They, their faces are probably over in the corner, stacked boxes, and I have to go through and figure out which of those boxes I stashed them in for their own protection. I love when I lose things like that. It's it's not lost, lost. It's just not accessible. Anyway, <laughs> that's uh, that. Now I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll do a little bit of the crafting. So I did some fun um, paper clay mold experiments. These are fondant molds. Um, and I say these because there's like four over here that <laughs> you can't see. And um, I press the paper clay into them and then just leave them and let them dry. Let's see, this is the one that came out of there. And the detail is pretty good. You will end up with some unavoidable bubbles, although this one has very few which is nice. Um, if you want a distressed, um, more distressed look, uh, the, the bubbles, you just leave them. If you want it to have 
fewer bubbles or a bubble has shown up where you definitely don't want it, you can um, do a slurry of paper, clay, and water and um, use a paintbrush or a tool. Like you could come back in to this part right here and possibly um, build that up to look more um, solid there. Just play around with the paper clay and, and then it will um, balance and equalize and dry out. You don't have to do anything to it. If you want to cover it with plastic for a day, that might actually help it to equalize. But I haven't ever done that so it, and haven't had a problem with it. Um, but when you take the paper clay to put in here, um, I do try to make sure that the the initial side is smoother and the smoother it is the better you'll uh, better surface you'll get especially for something that is uh, round like this where you you don't have a lot of decoration right here in the center and you want it to fill and not have any these these dark marks are actually because this is reclaimed paper clay those are not um, uh, cracks or anything that's dirt basically in my paper clay uh, that then when it's painted you wouldn't see that at all this actually only has maybe one bubble um, crack I'm not I'm not seeing this one right here oh there's some more over here but like I said they're not there's not a lot of them I'm really pleased with how it's turned out and I was going to use them on a kind of a uh, shabby chic um, miniature um, shelving unit to decorate it and then paint the whole thing. Um, also, this side is going to be lumpy, so if you're gluing it onto something where it needs to be flat, you'll want to run this over um, sandpaper of fine grit, like 600 grit. Um, might even work it with 1000 grit. I, you want it to be aggressive enough so that you don't have to spend a lot of time doing this back and forth, see, it's, it rocks. Um, and you want to get it flat, and then you just gently hold it like this as you go over the sandpaper. And then um, it'll, it'll get there pretty fast. Paper clay sands down pretty easily. And you'll have a flat back that you can then glue to a flat surface. Uh, one of the most complicated ones here had the least amount of bubbles or areas that didn't fit into the mold. I was really impressed with just how well that one came out. And again, I'm just pressing the paper clay in here, little bits of it, pressing it down in. And um, let's see, uh, until the whole area is full. And I was gonna show you that. Let's grab the paper clay. Okay, this is 100% reclaim here, I think. Um, I took the dry pieces that I'd shaved off of another project, you know, in the process of, I think it was Granny's hands. I saw that one of the hands was bigger than the other, and so I was taking some of the material off, and I took all those bits of paper dry, completely dry paper clay, and I put it in with some other paper clay and um, spritzed it and then sealed up into a Ziploc bag and um, just kind of squished them all together in the bag once once the bag was closed and see this is still it's a l little wetter than than brand new paper clay and a little off color anyway what I was talking about is this actually might make a better mold you take and try and maybe smooth out the side and then squish it in and you're just keep working it in and pressing until the whole um, bit of mold is yeah this is actually easier than when I did it the first time it has uh, a lot creamier uh, texture than the stuff straight out of the package brand new 
and you can get here without being recycled. You can you can take that brand new out of the package and spritz it and leave it in a Ziploc bag and it will get softer if you'd like something easier to work with for the molds. So doing kind of this motion helps to know that it's all um, down in the cracks and crevices of the mold. And I take off some of the excess, but not a lot of it. Because you kind of, just in case it wants to shrink down, you don't want it to develop a cave of wonders. <laughs> so, we've got the clay here. Might as well do another one. Like I said, it's it's... Just squishing it down in there. Um, so I watched a video this week that was uh, another YouTuber talking about their algorithm and how it affects them. It was very enlightening. I wish that I could remember who they were, but right now I cannot. Uh, but they also talked about their... Um, talking. How as a kid they were told not to, to be seen and not heard kind of thing. And I don't actually remember being told that. It just was implied a lot. You know, just through people's body language of not wanting to hear what you had to say. Anyway, I stopped talking. And then I didn't like all the negative... Um, connotations that were attached to being a female who talked. So I entirely just clammed up and everybody thought I was shy and had nothing to say. And really, I just didn't want to be that person. Didn't like the negative connotations. And I am trying to learn to not have a problem with just talking because you know, uh, it's kind of necessary and if you're gonna okay if you're gonna have a, a channel you gotta talk so right here on this one you probably can't see it but I have a little dip There's a little, I took a little bit too much out radar is asking for something probably to be held All the little feet going clippity clip through the room. I'm picking it up to look and see if I'm still dipping down. Because you can't fix that part. I mean, you could afterwards, you could add material, but it's it would it's easier to do it now. Okay, let's see. We can do this one too. No? Doesn't want to go into that one. I probably stopped in the middle of my thought there and didn't finish it. I apologize. Because, you know, you stop, you're derailed. You don't know where you were. Trying to get more comfortable with just talking about whatever's floating around in your head. And that can be really disjointed. I do try to roll it in a ball first, but I know that when I was doing it initially, I wasn't doing that because the, it wasn't helping get the harder clay in there. But it's, I guess it probably increases your chances of not having bubbles if you've got a, a smooth surface going in. A smooth surface on the clay that is going into as it goes into the, the mold. Look at that. That is almost not enough. So as it dries, it um, will pull away from the sides. 
Oh, and that's the other thing with the harder clay straight out of the package. I stretched my mold. Um, I don't know if... Wow, this mold really is wider at that end. I wonder if it was when I got it. Probably was. Anyway, the, the, I packed it so full with the clay that I was seeing distortion along the sides of the mold. Try not to do that because it will distort the piece. Now, none of these look especially distorted, so it may not be a deal breaker on creating the image. And these fondant uh, molds, or you can get resin molds, it's, it's just a silicone mold. And normally with the paper clay, you would want to use... Um, a plaster mold that's that's that has been historically used um but it's it was nice because plaster molds aren't that easy to come by anymore maybe well it's just that the silicone molds are more common um you can get them on amazon and and on etsy from various different people and here i am just picking at it um <laughs> they they're pretty easy to come by and they're not that expensive and you can get all kinds of different ones. Now I haven't tried um, my resin molds for making um, three-dimensional little cups or anything yet, but that is something I want to try. I started with these because they're, they're single side uh, molds. So you only have to worry about the one thing, one direction. Uh, I, I want to create some molds for um, dolls that are press molds because the, the baby that I showed you earlier, this little one here, would be really cool to be able to press it in um, to the mold and leave it hollow in the center. And um, then you would uh, sand, like I was telling you, on the sandpaper and the two... Um, the front and the back would be two pieces that you pressed into a mold and then you would glue them together. Uh, that's, that's one of the things I want to do. And I will probably do that with plaster, not with silicone, because I'm not in a position to make silicone molds. But it's nice to be able to use the existing commercially available mold to embellish whatever craft you're doing. And um, I want to be able to do this uh, in a mold to be able to make several of them for um, just just being able to get to the point of not having to spend the hours I spent creating this guy. You, you want to speed up the process to make it, you know, more commercially available for, you know, so that I can afford to produce them to sell for people who aren't in a position to make things from hand, by hand and want to purchase them. And um, so, yeah, I want to I wanna be able to do the, the mold for something like this. He's, this is definitely not to the point of mold making levels. It's very rough. And this side here has a dip that I want to correct. I was waiting till the interior was drier because this is solid paper clay. This does not have a hollow interior. And that means it's going to take longer to dry, but it's um, not reasonably big enough to do an interior, um, uh, like, I want to say something that takes up space, like foil. Um, I could have, but I didn't want to interfere with the end uh, what if I'd, you know, not gotten my foil down small enough? I have a hard time with that, getting the inner frame small enough. And so I only use it when I absolutely have to. And the... I'm seeing a crack here. And it's the first crack. This has been drying with zero cracks. And I've got a little bit of a crack here. And I'm not sure if it's an actual crack or if it's just... Uh, where I didn't get it smooth and poked it with a tool. Anyway, uh, being able to, to form it 
from scratch is cool for a one-off. That's this totally cool way to go. Um, but if you want to be able to do multiple of them, a mold is makes it more accessible to to your time spent and the money that you have to charge if you're gonna if you're going to sell them. And any anyway, these are things that I think about and work on trying to make it to where I can offer um, my creations and, and be able to afford to do so. Uh, and uh, this this one's kind of exciting for me. I've been meaning to do this for a while. Uh, is <laughs> Bob too right now. <laughs> if you know the Bob joke, you know the Bob joke. Uh, I had a porcelain doll that I made that was full size and uh, it was hand built. You know, hand building with porcelain is probably not a great idea. Um, the back of his head uh, had bubbles and it blew off in the firing process and we just glued it back on. And then I never got around to making him arms and legs and uh, eventually I buried him. So that's it. Your life is over. Send him back to the earth. Uh, but he was a cute little guy. So this is Bob too. And hopefully we get, you know, we won't stall out here and you'll finish this project. Anyway, that's what I had in mind for today. Well, I hope you've had fun and maybe even learned a little something that you can use and in your own crafting. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.